Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to present you my PhD project, which is a super resolution for bone microstructure CT imaging, which is supervised by uh, Marc Seban and uh, Alain Guignandon, and funded by the Manutech School, uh, Graduate School Manutech Slide. So this uh, project is the collaboration of three laboratories, which is uh, Laboratoire Hubert Curien, Symbiose, and Creatis. So firstly, I would like to present you a, a short introduction of my PhD, of my project, with a good text. Then I will present you a state-of-the-art comparison of methods uh, that leads to a, a paper in uh, ASIPCO 2022. Then I will present you our contribution, which is a morphometry-guided super-resolution. And finally, I will present you a last neural network, uh, which uh, aim at computing biological parameters. Finally, I will make a conclusion and uh, some perspective of the, of the thesis. So let's start with the introduction. So basically, the idea of uh, improving bone images is to better understand some bone diseases. For example, osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is a disease that is characterized by, the, uh, by a, a bone mass decrease a degradation of the bone uh, microstructure and an increase of the porosity of the bone. So here, what you can see in this bone that is that there is a hole that is getting bigger and bigger, and you have a, an outer layer of the bone which gets uh, thinner and thinner. So this uh, bone aging occurs with the age, but also to astronauts when they go to, to space and that there is a lack of gravity. So better understanding the bone aging can help also to better understand what will happen to the bone of astronauts. So to better understand bone aging, what do we do is that uh, biologists and uh, clinicians, what they do is that they take pictures of the bone. So they use a computed tomography, which is a CT scan that sends X-ray to an object and that creates a 3D image of the bone, which is, uh, which is here. So once you have your 3D image of your bone, you can separate two parts of the bone. You have the cortical part of the bone, which is the outer layer of the bone here. And you have the trabecular bone, which is the inner part of the bone here. Once you have those two parts of the bone, you can extract some information from those two parts. You can extract some information that describe the microstructure of the bone. So this information, which is here, 3D morphometrical and topological parameters, are used by biologists to diagnose, for example, some diseases, some bone diseases. Those parameters that depend on the spatial resolution of your images. And your spatial resolution that depends on the energy and the time exposure of your X-ray. So basically, if you want a good uh, image, and so a good uh, diag a better di a better analysis of your uh, of your bone, you will require a bigger energy, and this, unfortunately, it is uh, harmful for the patient. So to avoid that, there is some uh, regulation that limits the spatial resol resol resolution of the bone. So the goal of this project is to design a super resolution methods, deep learning super resolution methods that will. Uh, artificially increase the resolution so that we are able to better compute some 3D morphometrical and topological parameters. And then, of course, avoid avoiding uh, to increase the energy and the time exposure. So to do uh, this, uh, <clears throat> this deep learning super resolution, we need a data set. So we created a data set of mice data uh, at two different resolutions a high resolution at 10.5 micrometer uh, in terms of uh, voxel size and a low resolution at 19 micrometer. So we have the two resolution. We have the, 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 the image that we want to, to increase, the low resolution, and we have also the ground truth that we will use to train uh, the super resolution technique. So because those images are taken by different resolution, we may have uh, we, uh, the, the object within the image may be in the different position. So we needed to do first an affine transformation here, which is a, a registration to put uh, the object 
uh, in the image at exactly the same position. So at the end, we will have uh, two images, which are the right pairs, okay? So we have also an interpolation because, uh, of course, because there is different resolution here, it means that the 19 micrometer will have less slices in the image uh, volume. Uh, and the 10.5 micrometer will have twice the number of slices than the 19 micrometer. So in order to have exactly the same number of slices in the volume, we perform an interpolation uh, task. So at the end, we have exactly the same number of slices and we have the same pairs of images. Um, so now that we have our data set, I will present you a comparison of uh, state-of-the-art super resolution methods. Um, and to begin with, I will present you the four uh, state-of-the-art methods that we choose for this, uh, for this work. So the first uh, super, resolution, super resolution method that we choose is FSR-CNN, which is a non-blind super resolution method. It means that it learns to solve only one degradation. What I call a degradation is actually that uh, your high resolution, your low resolution is just a, a degraded version of your high resolution. And this will learn only one degradation. So the one it sees during the training. So what FSR-CNN do is that it takes into input the low resolution image here. It goes through a, a convolutional uh, network here. And at the end, you have a deconvolutional layer which increase the size of your image in order to have your high resolution image. So this is the specificity of FSR CNN. It has this layer here. So this upscaling task is learned during the, the training. We have also Arcane, which is also a non-blind super resolution method. But this time, the specificity of Arcane is that they, um, they put some attention to some features of uh, the images, for example, the high frequency features. You know that the details of the images are given by the high frequency features. So this uh, kind of network puts more attention, attention to, to those features. We have also DAN, which is a blind super resolution this time. So it learns to solve multiple degradation. It was supposed to work for every kind of real-world images. It means that when you don't know the degradation of your image, you can use uh, Dan. It, it's supposed to work. So how it works? Uh, simply, it has two parts, a restorer and an estimator. The restorer will generate uh, the high-resolution image, and the estimator will estimate the degradation of the resulted image, if there is a degradation. Then, According to this degradation and the result of the, the restorer, we will have another restorer, and then we again estimate the degradation, and again, and again, and again, until we have a high resolution image that is uh, almost perfect. And of course, at the end, we have a, a good estimation of the degradation of the, of the first image. <clears throat> Finally, we have peaks to peaks, which is a generative adversarial network. What does it mean? Simply, it has two parts. We have a, generating, a generator part here, and we have a discriminator. The generator aims at generating um, higher resolution images, and the discriminator will try to distinguish between the, a fake image and uh, a real image, a real high resolution. So both together will be trained uh, will be trained together. It means that the generator will try to fool the discriminator and the discriminator will, uh, will improve to distinguish uh, between fake and real. So at the end, we will have images that are more and more realistic. And the particularity of peaks to peaks is that the generator is a unit. So it means that it has an encoder and a decoder. So once the, now that we have our, uh, our four state-of-the-art methods, what, in, what we need is a, a metric to evaluate the reconstruction of our images. So what they do in papers, in, a, in super resolution papers, is that they use PSNR and SSIM. So PSNR is, a, is called also peak uh, signal to noise ratio. It is a metric that uses the mean squared error. So it is a, 
pixel-to-pixel uh, -pixel comparison between two images. Uh, basically, the more, the higher is the PSNR, and the better is the reconstruction between uh, the high and the and the and the generated image. We have also so uh, SSIM, which is this time an equation that has three terms: one on the luminance, one on the contrast, and one on the spatial correlation. And those two uh, those two metrics are very complementary. It means that you can have uh, images that have the same PSNR, but SSIM is different. So using those two metrics can help you to better understand uh, which, uh, which methods reconstruct uh, the image better. Now, we wonder in, uh, in our cases, in our case, if, uh, if those uh, evaluation metrics are sufficient to assess bone microstructure CT imaging. CT image. To do so, to respond to this question, to answer this question, uh, we use biological parameters. So we will calculate 3D parameters, 3D biological parameters, and we will see if uh, those parameters are well reconstructed in a, in a generated image. So we choose uh, here five uh, 3D morphometrical and topological parameters that are the most used by the biologists and the clinicians to say if there is a disease uh, in our bone. Okay? So we choose BVTV, which is the bone volume to volume ratio, which is the percentage of bone within a region of interest, here the green region. We have the trabecular thickness, which says uh, the average uh, thickness of trabeculae within the region of interest, for example, this yellow uh, line here. We have the connectivity density, which is the which says how much connected are the trabeculae in the region of interest. We have also the trabecular separation, which is the average separation between the trabeculae. And finally, we have the degree of anisotropy, which says which says the orientation of um, uh, how much oriented are the, the trabeculae. So. Now that we have the 3D parameters, what we want to see first is that between the high and the low resolution, there is a difference between those parameters. Because it will mean that with those parameters, we can actually uh, compute a difference between the high and the low. So we can see if we can reconstruct better or not. So what we do is that we calculate uh, the 3D and 2D uh, parameters. And to calculate those 3D and 2D parameters, we uh, take the low and the high resolution. We applied a Gaussian filter to, uh, to uh, delete the noise. Then we apply a node two uh, segmentation to binarize the image into black and white. So we take only the bones and we delete the background. And we also use the dispaker to, to, de to delete some uh, uh, unexpected noise. So at the end, we have a uh, we have images that are segmented and we can calculate 3D and 2D parameters that we can compare, okay? So this is an example here. Uh, this is the result, sorry. Uh, this is box plot where we calculated all the 3D, uh, we, we calculated trabecular thickness uh, parameters for all the maps that we have. Um, and what you can see is that for 3D parameters, there is a big difference between uh, the low and the high resolution. So it means that we have something to improve with the super resolution. It's the same for 2D, but it's less uh, significant simply because uh, we have way more 2D images with a bigger uh, variation. So of course, uh, we cannot see it correctly with a box plot, but we can still see that the mean is very different with a 10 micrometer of difference. Uh, so we did this for all the parameters that we have, and we saw that there is a uh, uh, big difference between almost all parameters, but uh, we can identify which parameters have differences and use them uh, for later. So here is uh, some results of, uh, of the state-of-the-art methods. So we have Arcane, FSR-CNN, Pix2Pix, Dan. Bcubic is just... Uh, it's just the, the low resolution that we increased with a big cubic interpolation, but you can consider that this is the low resolution. Uh, and this is the high resolution, so the ground truth. And what you can see here 
and that is very interesting, is that the Arcane and FSRC and N denoise the image when they are doing the super resolution task. But the pix to pix keeps the noise, but actually gives a, a result that is very close to the high resolution in terms of textures, in terms of, percep of perceptions. Uh, meanwhile, FSRC and Arcane gives results that are very bl blurry. So we wonder which one is the best now, which method is the best for reconstructed bones. If we look at PSNR and SSIM here, you can see that the PSNR and the SSIM is bigger for the FSR, CNN, and Arcane, and a bit less for peaks to peaks. But for me, I will say that peaks to peaks visually is the best for, this, uh, for the super resolution task. So how can I say now that uh, which one is the best? Well, we will see here. So firstly, here is the result of the box plot for all the uh, mass that we generated in our uh, test set. And what you can see is that, okay, Arcane and FSR CNN are indeed the best with a PSNR uh, bigger than 30, which is very good for a PSNR. And we have an SSCM of uh, almost 0 0.7. And peak to peak is very low in the SSIM when we compare to Arcane and uh, FSR CNN. So if we only use those metrics, we would say that peak to peak is very bad. Um, now we will look at the 3D morphometrical and topological parameters. So firstly, what you can see is the difference between the high and the low resolution. So we have, for example, in the Tribeca thickness 61 and the low resolution 67. So there is a difference, so we can improve something. Now, for the generated image, what you can see is that it's not, uh, it, it, we don't see improvement. It's even sometimes worse than what we had before. So for example, here Arken has 69, which is way above the low resolution. So uh, basically, for example, we have also trabecular separation here uh, with values that are way bigger also. So basically, we don't have improvement with those, uh, with those methods when we look at the parameters. It's, it's very random. Some are improved, but some are also not improved. And we can't say that there is an improvement uh, of those parameters when we use uh, state-of-the-art uh, super resolution methods. So what does it mean? It simply means that those state-of-the-art super resolution methods does not reconstruct uh, the microstructure of the bone correctly. Okay? So now that we uh, saw that, we, uh, we asked ourselves, can we uh, use those information to help the super resolution? So we use them, we use the parameters for, as a, an evaluation matrix, but can we use also this information to help the super resolution? So this is our proposition, which is a morphometry guided super resolution. So basically, it will take the low resolution, it will enter into a state of the art super resolution method. And what we do is that we added here a new neural network that will calculate uh, those parameters. I will explain later uh, more in details, but this is the new uh, the, the, our, our proposition here. At the end, we will have the super resolution image and we do exactly the same uh, things that the, than before to see if the reconstruction is better or not, okay? So this is our uh, neural network that is able to measure uh, the, 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 the parameters, the morphometrical and uh, topological parameters. But this time, the parameters that are calculated are 2D, so that we can use them inside the super resolution method, okay? So what it, do, what it does is that it takes an input, a segmented image of, uh, within the region of interest, okay? Uh, and enter into a convolutional network, which extracts some features, and then it enter into a neural network, a dense neural network, which will create, uh, which will output uh, parameters like the BVTV, the trabecular thickness, etc. So it's not the BVTV because it's 2D, but it's, a, it's an equivalent. Uh, what we do, what we do also, is that we give uh, to the neural network the mask of the region of interest, so that our network is able to know where to compute uh, those parameters. It has to know that it has to compute those parameters with, within this region of interest. Okay. 
So now that we have our neural network that is able to measure uh, parameters, uh, how do we use it? Simply, so we have our state-of-the-art super resolution, which creates a generated image, a super resolved image. And to this super resolved image, we will compute, we will measure those par uh, the parameters. We will also measure the parameters of uh, the high resolution image, and we will compare them with a uh, L1 or L2 norm. For now, it's a L1 norm. Uh, here it's a L2 norm, but uh, whatever. <laughs> For now, it's not, uh, it's not completely chosen. Um, so we have an L2 norm here, and we add this L2 norm to the loss of the super resolution task as a regularization term. So what we do also is that we added this little alpha here so that we can say uh, how much important is the, this uh, loss uh, within the, the new loss of the super resolution, okay? So we add this. And uh, now the objective is to find a good alpha so that we have uh, a maximum PSNR. So it will mean that I, uh, I have the best percep perceptual results that, uh, that I can, and, uh, and uh, having um, this, uh, this difference between the, the, the parameters that are the, the smallest possible. So it will mean that I reconstructed uh, my images in terms of microstructure of the bone uh, the best as, as possible. So this is an example. Uh, this is an old example. Now uh, I'm, I'm redoing this work again because uh, I uh, improved my, my, my uh, neural network. But uh, however, this is an example where we change alpha, uh, alpha during a cross-validation. Okay? So we change alpha and we measure, uh, we measure the, the, sorry, I can see uh, the mean squared error of my MPNN, which is my, uh, my, um, my uh, network which measure the, the parameters, uh, also the PSNR and also the SSIM. And what you can see, and which is very interesting, is that when I increase my alpha, my PSNR is not decreasing directly. So it means that I give importance to my uh, parameters and my alpha is still, way, is, is still big. It's the same for the SSIM. But when I increase my alpha, my MPNN part is getting better, is getting smaller. So it means that we reconstruct the bone more, correct, more correctly than before, and we keep a good perception of my images. Of course, when I increase too much, the images is not good anymore because I, I maybe created uh, bones that are not at the same place than, uh, than, uh, than the real image, but that, uh, that follow uh, the microstructure uh, representation in terms of parameters. Okay, so here, for example, I choose the, a good compromise with uh, alpha equal 0 0.05, which is just after here, the, the, this little plate. Okay, so now we have our uh, morphometry guided super resolution and we, thanks to this uh, MPNN, which is the network which calculates parameters, we thought that we can use this network for the community of biologists. So what we do is that we created two neural networks, one for 3D parameters and one for 2D parameters. So we have a 3D parameters, uh, 3D network that takes 3D images in input and output 3D parameters. And we think that it's very interesting for the community so that they have uh, something that avoid all the pre-processing pre uh, pre step that they have to do to calculate uh, those parameters. So this is a cortical and trabecular separation, for example, uh, the segmentation, which has the filters and the threshold to choose. Uh, all of this, of course, uh, induce some, uh, some variability uh, at the end when you calculate parameters. And if we choose to use a neural network now, we will be able to, to delete all this variability uh, that is induced by uh, the, the, the people. And of course, we will save a lot of time because we will avoid all this work uh, here. 
Okay, here is just an example of a first training of, uh, of BNN 3D, which is my, uh, my network, which works with 3D images. So what is interesting here is to see the box plot of, um, of the result. So it's box plots. Uh, those box plots will represent uh, the measurement between uh, calculation from all the mass of my data set, okay? And so what you can see here is the output and here is the label, so the ground truth. And we are pretty close even with a very small uh, data set. Uh, so now we, we also work to increase this data set to make it better. Okay. So to conclude, I showed a lot of things. Uh, the first thing is that uh, state-of-the-art methods are not able right now to, to construct biologically correct, uh, accurate uh, images, high-resolution images. I also showed that we can maybe use some uh, prior knowledge of the biology to, to help the resolution with a morphometric-guided super-resolution, and now we still have to, to validate it. And, uh, and of course, I showed that uh, we can also bring some, uh, some new uh, work, some new uh, tools uh, to uh, biologists for, for the calculation of, uh, of parameters. And for the perspective, of course, the, the goal at, at first was not to, uh, to work on mice. So then we will have to work on human data set. So what we are doing right now also is to, to create a human data set with a human corpse. Uh, so that we will be able to train our new uh, super resolution techniques on human uh, samples. And after that, maybe apply it to an astronaut data set to better understand the bone aging. Uh, finally, what we can do also is working on 3D because now our super resolution is only 2D. But uh, what we are seeing uh, in terms of uh, objects is 3D structures, so it will be interesting to work in 3D. Okay, thank you.